this is Tony from the A Minute to Midnight show and today we are welcoming Laura Maxwell from Glasgow, Scotland. Welcome Laura. Hi Tony, thank you for having me on your show. Great, really looking forward to um, hearing your testimony and your insights into the supernatural realm and tying it in with Christianity and where we should be as well and the deceptions that are out there. So can you give us a little bit of a background about yourself there, Laura? Uh, Yes, um, I was brought up in the kind of New Age philosophies and teaching and um, but particularly with a focus on spiritualism. My mother was training to be a medium. I came out of that lifestyle 20 years ago when um, things went badly wrong and I found Jesus through all of that. And um, since then, in more recent years, I've been sharing on TV, radio, um, really what I learned through spiritualism and what God has shown me about it all. Um, My story's been in books, it's been in in school books in Australia, New Zealand, it's been in magazines, Um, really just sharing as widely as I possibly can to, to share the truth with people. Great, and you have a a, um, a website as well, don't you? Can you give just give that now, and we'll we'll give it again later on. The website address is a spiritual quest dot tk. Great. Okay, so I'm sure uh, people after this interview will be looking forward to um, to seeing that because there's a lot of great stuff on there. So when you say you had a spiritual uh, upbringing, can you give us a bit more detail about that? Yeah, well, basically, you know, as a child, I was interested in anything supernatural and I was fascinated with ghost stories, whether that be in children's books or whether it be TV shows. Um, Just was always interested in psychic phenomena lots of things like that and and really um of course at at school and especially at halloween these kind of interests were fueled more Uh, my mother she had psychic experiences throughout her life and she didn't really pursue it until later on in life but myself as i was growing up i had some psychic experiences too um so, so really, just through my childhood, I was always open to, to, to beliefs in in the the hereafter. And then, when I got to high school, by by then my parents had divorced, so my mum felt more free to explore these types of things because my dad, um, basically protected us, I guess, from going into all he he didn't like it. So, she she one day she was walking the dogs in the park and a a local medium approached her and he said to her he could see her potential as a medium and he invited her to go along to the spiritualist church that was in Glasgow. So she did that and very, very quickly she got really fascinated in it all and she got involved in it all very quickly. They had midweek psychic development classes, they had yoga classes um, they had circles where you you all sat in a circle and learned to meditation was a big thing. They really recommended you do that too to open yourself up to spirits. So my mum did did all that, and um, really she just really loved it and really took to it very quickly and and began to develop a uh, clear voice, clear audience, clear sentence really quickly, and. Um, on a Sunday in the, in the Spiritualist Church, they would have a Sunday service where the medium on the platform um, would do a teaching and then open it up for demonstrations. So they would invite spirits to um, come through and, and speak through the medium to the people in, in the gathered there and give them messages from, well, they claimed it was... Um, they thought it was spirit guides. They thought it was dead relatives. And uh, this this would happen ev- every Sunday. So eventually, you know, I was a kind of young young teenager at the time. So I started going too. And just like my mum, I was fascinated. And um, 
I became a member of the Spiritualist Church as well and started going with her several times a week. So, you know, and really it was all very accurate, but it certainly wasn't um, smoke and mirrors, you know, the information given to us by these so-called spirits, it was obviously genuine. You, you couldn't say the medium was just making it up, you know, the far too accurate information that was given. And so we definitely believed that it was our dead relatives who were there um, because of the way they described them, the common phrases they would use, all the information they gave. We really didn't doubt that it wasn't the dead relatives. And we really get involved in all the other kind of a, I guess I would call it new age, but I know nowadays that new, it's not necessarily called the new age anymore. You could maybe even call it neo new age. Um, you know, things like crystal healing, teachings on opening the chakras, teachings on reincarnation, different things to do with spiritual enlightenment, um, healing, energy healing, all that, that kind of thing that's just so, so popular nowadays. Um, whereas years ago, it would tend to be either, you know, spiritualists that would do that or um, people from Eastern uh, philosophies and, and religions. So, you know, we were really involved in, in all of that and just really believed in all the teachings that, that we were taught then. My mother, um, she began automatic writing and uh, the mediums did tell her she would become a medium, so she was training with that end in sight. They told me I would become a psychic artist and I would draw portraits of dead relatives and spirit guides. However, I, I never actually got into that because I left before that um, happened, although I did want to do it, actually. So, really, we, we were involved with this for years, and every now and then we would hear sometimes... Um, a nasty experience could, could happen. Sometimes a medium would be attacked by a spirit um, or so-called spirit guide or dead relative, but they would assure us that that's pretty rare. And if it happens, it's probably just the medium's fault. Maybe she hasn't tuned in correctly to spirit. Maybe she hasn't protected herself enough. Maybe she's got bad vibes herself, so she's just attracted a low spirit. You know, there was different ways that they could explain why such a thing would happen. Um, however, they told us, um, my mother and myself, we were told by many different mediums, that kind of thing won't happen to you guys because uh, we can tell you've got good karma and you've got good vibes and, you know, that kind of rhetoric that uh, you don't need to worry about that type of thing happening to you. You've got too much protection around you and all that. But, uh, yeah, it was a concern because... We sometimes heard it went so badly for some mediums, they would end up being to totally taken over in trance and um, even attacking people, attacking their family, um, have nervous breakdowns, be incarcerated in psychiatric wards. So, so we knew that this was a potential hazard, but we just trusted them when they said, you know, you guys will be okay. One thing that interests me is they call themselves a spiritualist church. Is there any room for God, or how do they put God in the spiritualist church? Well, do you know, it kind of varies really between different mediums, I guess, and what they've been taught. And, and I heard a variety of different explanations. Some of them didn't have any room for God at all. Some of them did. Some of them would even say the Lord's Prayer before they began the seance, um, but the, the general teaching that, that I was taught was from Madame Helena Blavatsky and, um, you know, the theosophy teaching where basically Lucifer is um, believed to be God and that Lucifer was the one who made the ultimate sacrifice, not Jesus Christ, and that Lucifer is still a being of light. He's still this beautiful angel he he never fell and became satan like christians say um yeah and that you know we're all part of the collective consciousness and we're all supposed to evolve spiritually and come together and 
whether you call it one world religion or, or whatever you call it, we're all meant to blend together with all faiths, all spiritualities, so that the whole, you know, age of Aquarius type teaching and that uh, Lucifer will come back um, in the last days, there will be a world teacher that everyone will come under him. And basically that was the kind of a teaching on God and very similar actually, well, practically identical to the teaching that our mutual friend Carolyn Hamlet shared that, you know, the Illuminati, the, the Luciferian doctrine, um, where, where they talk about the plan and the whole world coming under the system of, of um, Lucifer. So, yeah, we were taught that too. And we were taught that basically if people do not accept Lucifer, um, they will be killed. They will be killed um, or they will be removed by spirit guides. They will be removed by aliens because everyone will have to come under Lucifer, um, you know, to have this utopia type um global healing of the world take place uh, and they certainly said it was rubbish when christians said oh well that's actually satan and that's what the bible says about the last days they thought that was just um a gross misinterpretation of it all wow that's really very interesting so th did this information come through the mediums and through spirit guides or was that just the philosophy of that spiritualist church or how did it how did it how was that information presented to you sure the information was pre presented yes it was indeed given to mediums from their so-called spirit guides from their angels aliens um space brothers what whatever entity whatever the entity called itself yes that teaching was given through them but it was only backing up what the theory already was and obviously that theory goes back many many years as I said for example Madame Helena Blavatsky the 1830s she taught that um, and she's considered the mother of the new age but obviously it goes further back than that too um, and whether it's through spiritualism whether it's through Freemasonry um, or the Illuminati it's the same same type of teaching as you know the freemasons believe lucifer is god too and they all consider each other's a kind of a brotherhood sisterhood we considered the freemasons like a brotherhood to us um i knew some mediums who were also freemasons um in fact my uncle was he was um high up in the masons plus he led a spiritist church so you can see the overlap in a lot of their theory and in practice, really, just believing they can speak to the dead and speak to these beings. And they would never assume it, it was a, a demon like we know it is, um, or like the Bible says. Okay. So it's really, when they call it New Age, really all it is is a rehashing of ancient paganism, isn't it, actually, in a nutshell? It's not even really new. No, totally. And, it, you know, as you say, yeah, it goes right back to, you know, the Old Testament talks about Obviously, way, way back, Leviticus and Deuteronomy talks about witchcraft or mediums. And yeah, that's what witches and mediums did then. And witches today, obviously, they do um, some of them. And Wiccans will talk to so-called dead relatives or talk to so-called entities. Now, a, Wicca, a Wiccan or a witch wouldn't call herself a, a spiritualist, but the practice, um, some of the practices are, are the same and do overlap. And what you mentioned Freemasons, I think the lower level Freemasons haven't got a clue that they're worshipping Lucifer. It's only as they get further up in the hierarchy towards, well, I think 31st degree and upwards perhaps it is, that they realise that it's Lucifer that they're worshipping. So they suck people in slowly. Sure, sure. And then by that time they're so sucked into it that they just accept it and it's not such a shock to them anymore. That's certainly the way it's been for generations. But I think nowadays people, the shock level has left and nowadays people are far more willing to worship Lucifer a lot quicker and with a lot less encouragement, shall we say. And I think that's a lot to do with the media and the way certain rock stars just admit that they talk to Lucifer, that they pray to Lucifer. They've made it a lot more attractive and a lot less frightening and less uh, seemingly dark. Um, so it's seems to be more acceptable now for people. 
Well, even even the ones that do make it look dark, you know, you've got the death metalers and heavy metalers and all those type of people when they have these horned-looking gods and, you know, demonic creatures, but they're pro- portrayed that not to be scared of them or that, that somehow those horrendous-looking creatures are actually good. It's like it's so back to front and black and white. And, I mean, I know people in that scene quite yeah. well, and um, it's sort of like, oh, man, you're so deceived. I know people that uh-huh. are successful in that scene as musicians and everything, and it's like, oh, wow. Um, it is but it's t- such totally, a deception. Yeah. Totally. And I think as well because many of them feel it's given them certain powers, supernatural powers. Um, they feel they can get these demons to do what they want and they can control these demons. But what they're not realising is it's just a, it's a, it's a lie. In actual fact, the demons are in control of them, not the other way around. And they only find that out when they come to Jesus and get these demons cast out of them, basically. Yes, um, and it would be the same with the, the mediums and that the, they think, I imagine, that they're in control when, in fact, they're actually puppets, really, aren't they? Totally, because in the 20 years I left that scene, I hear that again and again and again. It happened to me and my mother, and it's happened to so many others, that when they try to leave spiritualism, they suddenly realise they can't, that the spirit guides, these demons, are in control of them, and the person can go through hell trying to get free from it um, until they come to Jesus Christ and he sets them free. And that's, you know, that's what happened to my mother, myself. So can you tell us a little bit more about your experiences when you were in the spiritualist movement and then how you actually did come to get out of it? Yeah, well, basically, you know, for for a lot, a lot, a lot of the time, it was fascinating. We really, really enjoyed it. We felt satisfied by it all. We felt fulfilled. Um, any kind of a supernatural experience we had felt wonderful. You know, if someone suggested to me that was something evil, I would laugh at them because as far as I was concerned, the experiences were so blissful. How on earth could this be evil? Um, be evil behind it. So, yeah, just like what I said earlier, we, we were encouraged to meditate. We were encouraged to do yoga. We were encouraged to open our chakras. All of that type of thing to um, allow the spirits closer to us because they knew these practices are supernatural practices and that do attract spirits which is interesting because nowadays you get even Christians doing yoga they've got no idea that (laughs) it's a supernatural exercise it's not just for relaxation so really we did all that and my mother was developing to be a medium and um, I I wanted to become one too and uh, yeah just Things would happen in the house, spirits would show up in the house and talk to my mother. She would get messages for people, you know, people in the street. She would get messages for neighbours. She did the automatic writing. Really, it went on like that until basically the horrible stuff started to happen, just like we'd heard that others can experience so We tried to get help, and the mediums and the psychics we knew, they were all lovely, lovely people, and really tried to help us, but they couldn't. Now, the interesting thing is, they assured us that that type of thing wouldn't happen to us. They assured us we had good spirit guides and all that, and yet they couldn't couldn't stop it, and they couldn't understand why it was happening to us. In fact, the same spirits that spoke to my mum and I, you know, those mediums had saw with their own eyes spiritualized so they were at a loss as to how to explain it so basically we we got to the point where we couldn't um just we couldn't go back to the the spiritualist church anymore because it wasn't helping us get free from it and you know my mum was being attacked by these so-called spirit guides which confused us both and the spirits would say to us well it's just a test you're going through or they would make up these strange reasons and we just accepted it because we didn't know what else to think what sort of attacks what sort of attacks were you were you coming under um well people would probably call it sleep paralysis 
being literally attacked by physical, you know, you could feel the physical hands trying to choke you, strangle you, trying to press down on your chest, trying to stop you breathing. Um, you could feel it and yet obviously not, not see. It was, there wasn't a person in the room. My auntie, my aunt visited once. Actually, my mother and I were out the house. My aunt came to feed the dogs. She was picked up and thrown down the stairs. She broke her wrist. Um, just attacked day and night and horrible, you know, just ob obscenities and shouting and swearing at us and just being really, really nasty. Well, you'd mentioned about being strangled. Well, I actually personally, I, I suppose I shouldn't go into it too much here because it's your show, but I actually had the experience when I was 17 years old of being strangled uh, in the night, but I actually could see the hand that was around, uh -huh. around my throat. It was physically there. And it was actually yeah. only when I began to pray, and I wasn't a Christian, but I get, began to pray in my mind the Lord's Prayer at that point, I was able to release um, the pressure enough that I could speak out and rebuke it and, and yeah. throw the thing off. But it was, there's a lot more to it than that. But very quickly, that was the scariest experience of my entire life. It is indeed an MD that I know that's been through that will say the same. It, it's the most frightening thing. You know, an army couldn't help you. A police officer couldn't help you. It is just the most frightening thing. And it is very real. And so, it's only a yeah. spiritual answer. <laughs> There's only only Jesus Christ really is the only one, only answer. Yeah, you know, that's why I was saying it doesn't matter if you have an army beside you, nothing is gonna stop that for you, um, other than other than Jesus. And one night my mother and I decided to leave spiritualism. We'd already left the spiritualist church, we'd stopped going to all the um meetings and we stopped doing all the kind of new age activities. We got books out the library and we called on the names of many different gods, thinking, you know, surely some god from some religion can help us here. Uh, and of course, it only got worse um, because we only called in more spirits to ourselves. So it got worse and worse. And basically, my mum became pretty housebound with it, uh, stuck indoors. Because when we tried to go out, the spirits would pick her up and throw her about the street. So it was causing a scene outside and, you know, she was attacked whether she was indoors, whether she was outdoors. So we um, told the spirits we didn't want to be involved in this anymore and we asked them to leave. And basically they just laughed at us and said, no, um, we're in control. Basically they let us know, you thought you were in control um, as a spiritualist, but no, once you gave us that right, we've come and we've come to stay and uh, we're not going. So they told my mother that, they told her they would torment her for the rest of her life. So, and bearing in mind, some of these spirits were meant to be our dead relatives. So we realised eventually they weren't our dead relatives after all, because there's no way my, my lovely gran would, would turn up and treat me like this. They, they, they've been masquerading spirits all along. Um. Mm. How, how, how old were you when you were trying to leave, when you were going through all this? Well, I eventually left when I was 26, but it was years of trying to leave. I, I don't even know now, a good five years or so, uh, really quite a while. And it, it, it was awful. It got to the point where my mum, she, um, well, before this happened, actually, she, she went to the doctor and asked for sleeping pills because of course she couldn't get to sleep at night either. And, but before she did this, she one night was so, so bad that the spirits all turned up and she knew they wanted to kill her. Now they tried before, um, as I say, by trying to strangle her or whatever, but this night they turned up and she was, she was convinced this is it, they're going to kill me this time. So she called on, um, spirit guides, angels, anything that might help her. And a being turned up, he came into the room and he was beautiful and he was covered in light and she was convinced, you know, this this was Lucifer. He was the good angel, you know, he was here to, to help her. And so she was happy. But when he approached the bed, she suddenly saw the most evil eyes and the most evil presence she'd ever felt. And in that moment, she realised Lucifer was not a good God. 
Um, he was not the angel. So, uh, you know, there were snakes on the wall. All these demons were, were pretending to be snakes, what have you. So in that moment, she, start, she started to shout, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, over and over and over. And uh, the, all the demons left. So, but she still wasn't a Christian. She still hadn't asked Jesus into her heart. But she just, you know, she used the name of Jesus and yes, it did work. She still was a medium. So she went to the doctor, told her about her, her problem. The doctor said, well, I don't believe in talking to spirits and that you're being attacked by spirits. If you're claiming this, then you must be um, paranoid, schizophrenic, and I need to put you in the, the psychiatric hospital. And very sadly, that's what happened. Um and again, my mum and I had heard of this before, that this had sometimes happened to mediums. So she was in there, and during this time, she still hadn't asked Jesus into her heart. During this time, I was at university, and I was in my second year, and I met a Christian. I really liked her, and she kept, you know, talking to me about Jesus, and I really wasn't interested, but I liked her, so I kind of humoured her, and... I told her what was going on with my mum and how my house still had problems. I was still being attacked by these spirits. So she invited me to her church. And, you know, I really didn't want to go because my idea of Christianity was boring and uh, I just nothing about it appealed to me at all. So I kept putting it off. But eventually she kept asking. I thought, OK, I'll go. Um. She said a, a Christian prophet was coming, a visiting prophet, and that he would probably prophesy to people in the congregation. So I thought, all right, the guy's obviously just a medium then. He thinks he's a prophet. But <laughs> in my mind, the guy was just psychic. So I thought, OK, I'll, I'll see what he says to me kind of thing. So I went along and he did pick me out and he did prophesy and at the time, I, I didn't understand, but obviously now, that was 20 years ago, looking back at it now, I fully understand and, and what he said was true. But that night when I went home, um, I went home and I was absolutely terrified because the spirits were ra raging mad that I had been to a Christian church and heard the gospel. They were raging mad and I was really frightened that night. I kept the lights on all night. Uh, I got a Bible do you know, it was just a really bad night. I won't go into it all. But during the night, I kept thinking of this Romany gypsy. She kept coming into my head and I thought, why do I want to see a Romany gypsy? She'll tell me, stay away from Jesus. Just, you know, just keep doing psychic things. But lo and behold, the next day, I hadn't saw her for about six months. Lo and behold, the very next day, she appeared at my door and she said, um... God sent me to tell you today that wherever you went last night is, is uh, the truth. And I want you to know I've got born again and asked Jesus into my heart and, and I'm no longer doing the psychic um, divination and all that that she used to do. Um, so to me, that was really a great sign. And it was very shortly after that that I did ask Jesus into my heart. Wow, that's awesome! Amazing, a amazing that you know that God sent the right person at the right time, and it wouldn't have been someone you would have expected. But that's how God works, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, I think if if it had been a Christian minister, I might not have listened to him. But the fact she had been involved in the the occult herself and now found Jesus to me that that was just such. Proof. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Amazing. Actually, I'm digressing a little bit, but I think one of the most powerful books I've ever read, um, and I recommend people get it, uh, um, it's not a long book, but to, to give to anyone that is in the occult or in witchcraft or any such thing is a book called From Witchcraft to Christ by a, a lady called Doreen Irvine. Was yeah. written in the nineteen. Uh, she was a uh, crowned queen of witches of the world in the nineteen thirties. It's a very powerful book. I yeah. don't know if it's still in print or not, but I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great book. Hey, for I think for people yeah. that are you know wanting to know some of the answers. Anyway, yes, yeah, 
So you've actually read it yourself, have you? I, I read it um, shortly after my mother died, and I'll tell you the, the story about that. When um, she she got out of hospital and she came back home, and and I was a baby Christian, I was in a, a Christian church. This church was quite a new church. The pastor was quite young. He had no experience whatsoever of the deliverance ministry. Some people call that exorcism. Um, so when I went to him and said, look, my mum's back home. She's still getting attacked by demons in the house. He, he just didn't believe it because by now she had asked Jesus into her heart. And he was saying, well, if she's a Christian now, she can't be um, bothered by demons. Um, he just didn't think she would need exorcism because she's now a Christian. So basically, my mum didn't get help. And that's why I, lo I love to share my story too and what happened to my mum to emphasise that Christians really need to be seeking God um, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, about healing the sick, about casting out demons, because if Jesus and the disciples did it, and it's in the book of Acts, it's in the, you know, in the Gospels, then we should be doing it today, and so many of us don't. And then we wonder why even our Christian brothers and sisters are sick or, or being tormented <laughs> by demons. We can't just blame it all on mental illness or hallucinations. Sometimes it really is a demonic problem. So what happened to my mother was she did not get the help she could have got, and sadly, the demonic um, attacks continued and she just took her life. She killed herself. Wow, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But, do you know, what? and that's been 20 years ago that that happened, and yet in that 20 years I've heard again and again so many people who will tell me, yeah, I'm a Christian now, um, but I'm still getting attacked by demons um, I realise I need exorcism, but my pastor doesn't believe in it. What do I do? You know, and it's really, really sad because these people can get to the end of the rope. Yeah, the church in many ways has become weak and insipid and far from the gospel, you know, more interested in preaching about becoming wealthy than they are about essential parts of the go of the gospel and deliverance is part of it. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So once that happened, then what w what was the road for you from that point? Well, then you see, my mother's house still had had uh, the demons in it, so she's she's dead now. So the house is empty, and I'm trying to get help to get the house cleansed because I don't want to sell the house and have new people move in and live in that hell. So I realised the church I was in just didn't understand so I had to leave and, and go around different churches in Glasgow until I found a church who actually believed in these things you know you feel like saying to them don't you read the bible that you profess to believe in um and eventually I, I did find a church that you know thankfully had a good 50 years experience in the deliverance ministry and uh, exorcism and I wished I'd met them before because my, I know my mother would still be alive if I had met them back then because they would have helped her. Anyway, they um, got her house free and also it was pretty obvious I needed help. So I had a lot of deliverance ministry and yeah, those different demons of divination and spiritualism, yoga, you know, you name it, those demons came out at the name of Jesus Christ. And um, then basically, you know, that was the start of my, of my Christian walk and, and seeing marvellously up close and personal how Jesus Christ um, has the power over all of these entities. And is it the name of Jesus Christ that these things um, flee when his light comes in and exposes the darkness? So what would you say to, to any Christians that are dabbling at all in yoga or even perhaps martial arts, uh, any sort of horoscopes, any stuff like that? Sure, I would say, you know, any of these things, stop for a little minute and think about the source. You know, certainly if supernatural things are happening with it, then you know the source. It's either Jesus or Satan. Which is it? Um, 
and they might say, well, nothing supernatural happens to me in yoga. Well, maybe not, because you're not aware of it, that's all. But bearing in mind, mediums taught us that doing yoga opens you up to spirits, doing meditation opens you up to spirits. Caroline Hamlet was taught the same, and she was in the Illuminati. The, these guys up the top, whether it's Satanism, whatever, they, they know that, and that's why they promote all these things, and that's why for years and years and years it has basically started to infiltrate the church, not just mainstream society. And yeah, deep, even Christians can get demonised by these things. Um, they certainly can. So you don't see Jesus and the disciples bothering to, you know, cast magic spells or meditate or whatever. They, they just use the power of the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues, heal the sick, cast out demons, you know, <laughs> it's the source of it. What is the source? And if, you, if you're if you not sure what the source is, I suggest you do what the Bible says, test the spirits in Jesus' name. And I've said this to umpteen people. People have saw me on TV. They've saw me on YouTube. From all around the world, they've contacted me to say, Laura, I was a medium. I saw you say test the spirits. So the next time my spirit guides turned up, I tested them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Show me who you truly are. And yeah, you were right. It wasn't my dead grandmother. It was a demon. T wow. Test the spirits. That's great. Great advice. So what is your understanding on chakras? You mentioned that before chakras and the third eye and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, it's very interesting because I heard the interview with you and Carolyn Hamlet, the ex-Illuminati member, and I totally agree with everything she said, um, that, yes, we were taught about these things and how they would open you to, to spirits and uh, help you raise your vibrations and all of that. So why why do that? Because you are dabbling in spiritual things. And, you know, when I, when I came to Jesus Christ, when I started to get deliverance ministry and I was set free from demons uh, yep I was set free from demons of yoga because they basically acted like snakes which is not surprising when they talk about the kundalini serpent power um, the third eye um, the chakras each of those entry points yes it's an entry point but it's an entry point that you've allowed demons to go into and so I needed deliverance to get um, myself cleansed in those areas um, the proof's in the pudding, you know, a demon won't come out if it's not there. <laughs> yeah. So now you, you're you doing this sort of um, warning people and and trying to help people um, get out of, out of these things. So have you got any kind of advice or what, what should somebody do that is... Um, is a medium or somehow involved in the occult and is wondering how to get out, what mm -hmm. would you advise them to do? Well, the first thing, the first step is to ask Jesus Christ into your heart um, to become your saviour and your Lord because you cannot get out of this without him. That's just a fact. Um, this is a hard bit though, and I'll, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you because it was hard for me find Christians who understand this and who can help you because yes there will be a deliverance ministry required and all your books and paraphernalia has to be thrown out to get rid of all the demonic attachments there's deliverance ministries that you could contact that could help you and people like myself my blog and I list other ministries that are similar you know there's people like myself who can try and put you in touch with a deliverance ministry in your city uh, which is not easy because, as I say, the church is not doing its job, basically what Jesus told us to do. Um, but there is hope, and I'm alive today, and that's a, that's a miracle because if I did not get help, I think I would have just been the same as my mother. So, you know, Jesus wants people free, and yeah, we're in the last days, and the devil is, you know, things are getting worse, spiritually speaking, around the world. We see that, but at the same time, Christ's light is shining much stronger and Christ's light shines stronger in the darkness and he wants you free. So, yeah, that's great. Can you um, just tell people where they can find you again on the web? Yes, it's on a spiritualquest.tk 
And on that blog, they can even see my TV interviews and a lot of other ministries like myself um, that they can they can watch their videos and read their read their articles. Great. And just just a lot of stories, you know. I have my own radio show, and on my own radio show, I interview people um, from similar backgrounds who got free when they found Jesus Christ. So it's encouraging to even listen to these um, other testimonies of others. And your radio show, is that available on your blog or does it have a separate website? It's um, it's a, a radio channel called Eternal Radio and there's maybe about six or eight different hosts on there. I'm just one of the hosts. But yeah, information about my radio show will be on my blog. Great. So do you have any um, final things that you'd like to, to inform the listeners, Something that, that anything that comes to mind that you'd still like to get out while we've still got a few minutes? Yeah, I think I'd like to emphasise that, you know, this, this kind of topic isn't an easy topic and sometimes people can become afraid and anxious and I realise that and I want to say, you know, that's what happens when you hear the truth. When you first hear the truth, it is, it is scary. But please don't let that put you off and please realise you've heard this message for a reason. Jesus is calling you to himself. He wants you free and that's why you've listened to this broadcast today and he can set you free from anything. So please, um, you know, try not to be frightened and realise Jesus wants you free. He loves you and he has a future and a destiny and a brand new life for you. Wow, that's just awesome. Thank you for um, being on our Minute to Midnight show, Laura, and I'm sure we'll get you back again. Oh, that would be lovely. I would really love that. Thank you so much, Tony. So there you have it. That was an interview with Laura Maxwell from Glasgow, Scotland. Makes a bit of a change from American accents and Kiwi accents. Um, Please take time to like that video and maybe leave some comments and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also visit a minute to midnight.com all our videos are being posted there and also great articles by a variety of different writers on different topics and it's going to become an increasingly good resource so visit a minute to midnight.com and well We'll have more great interviews coming up very soon, so um, until next time, this is Tony for A Minute to Midnight.